Change just released a devastating report. What New York City is doing to address the looming crisis. And there's a special unique aspect of this for New York City, being the financial capital of the world, the cultural capital of the world, the media capital of the world. When we do things here, it gets noticed across the globe. Of Congress. I am the left. Hi, and welcome to the show. Just ahead, the representative for New York's 9th Congressional District, Yvette Clark, will be joining us. Over the last couple of weeks, her office has been inundated with calls about the Kavanaugh hearings, as well as the Trump administration's plan to restrict green card access for immigrants who they deem likely to use public assistance programs. But first, a bit of bleak news this past weekend from the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. That body, publishing its first report since the Paris Climate Accords, says rising atmospheric temperatures won't have to rise as high as previously thought before wreaking widespread damage in the form of increased droughts, wildfires, food shortages, and mass die-offs of coral reefs. And that we have until 2040 to reverse direction. To tell us what New York City is doing to address this looming threat, we're joined over the phone by Daniel A. Zarelli, Chief Climate Policy Advisor to the Mayor. Thanks for taking here in New York City, and I want to welcome everyone to Indie Week. It's certainly an honor and privilege to be here just to share some thoughts with you this afternoon. As has been stated, I'm Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark, and I represent the 9th District of New York. For those of you who've had an opportunity to travel across our great city, it's for the borough of Brooklyn. And if you know where the, uh, yes, Brooklyn <laughs> <laughs> house. Brooklyn's <laughs> always in the house. <laughs> and, uh, and for those of you who know the Barclay Center, my district begins there on my northern end and, and runs south. So the Barclay Center is on Atlantic Avenue. My district goes south to a community called Sheepshead Bay, which is where the Atlantic Ocean Comes in. So, a quick way to remember it is that my district runs from Atlantic to the Atlantic. <laughs> uh, I thought about what I would share with you today. The first thing I want to share with you is that I'm left handed. And why do I say that? Because we all know left handed people are extremely creative. I'm in a room. Did I get an amen over here? <laughs> um, there are a whole host of um, creative people in this room today, and I think that's what draws us here to talk about um, the independent music movement. And uh, I guess another piece that I want to share with you is that uh, in, in my teenage years, I was really uh, caught up in the whole uh, club scene and disco music, so much so that I wanted to be a DJ. <laughs> so I began to gather crates and crates and crates of music that I loved. Um, you know, growing up in a household where there was a real appreciation for music, uh, it's just been a part of my life. And luck would have it that I'd get a scholarship to Oberlin College. And Oberlin College, for those of you who may be aware, has a conservatory of music for classically trained and, and jazz musicians. And so I, my life has just been filled. Of New York, our Congresswoman, um, Miss Yvette Clark. Can we give our moderator a round of applause? If, if, if you were tired this evening, I know that she pumped some energy into you. Let me take a moment. That was deep, right? So tax compliance, I need help with my taxes. Help. So, uh, National Black MBA, the Metro New York chapter, is kind of blessed to have a lot of accountants, talented accountants, talented finance people. Uh, so uh, that's one of the benefits of. Uh, <laughs> 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 